Okay guys, um, it's late and I, I want to get rid my brain is kind of burnt out but um, I really wanted to show you um, probably the most exciting thing in this, I mean this text is exciting, it's very relevant I really pray people uh, read this on their own um, but there's an amazing revelation um, at least for me uh, regarding um, we can really discern now remember this text we brought forth maybe like six months ago on um, the order of Enoch uh, the order of the ancients I'll put it in the description box below okay so what Jesus is talking about in this text is literally talking about the te it really confirms Enoch's testimony that we read in Yasher chapter 3. Now let's check this out. Okay, the smallest group of all consists of those who live on a spiritual plane. All right, we, we got to read, you got to read this on your own in context. I just want to run through this just to point this out to you guys. These transcend the limitations of mortal existence. They join the angels and rise to dwell among God Oh, I, I didn't. I had to change that. And dwell among God while they are still in mortality. They are not trapped by their bodies or their minds, for they bring body and mind into subjection to the light within them. So they are transformed into the image of Elohim. These put on the mind of Christ. They become the Father and the Son. The Son submitting to the Father in every situation. Okay, this is exactly what happened to Enoch. Okay, I'll put this stuff in the description box below. This is exactly what happened to Enoch. It's like what Colossians says. It's like when we apply the word in our hearts and, and really just having our hearts to go further with God, um, we, be, we transform into the image of God. That's exactly what happened to Enoch. And eventually... You know, guys, this stuff, all the apostles achieved this higher type of, ex with not getting Gnostic or anything, but higher type of um, walking in the light of the cross, not the wood of the cross, okay? Um, all the apostles did. Enoch did this. This is really confirming what Enoch did. <clears throat> okay. And um, so here we get into the mention of the firstborn church. This is why that text is called the Order of Enoch, because Enoch was really the first one to likely achieve this. He was the first one to not taste death. And all this confirms something Yah has given me. Like, I've already shared this on my channel. Like, when I was back in Long Island, like, months ago, um, I cried out to the Lord. I just like, Lord, I just want to preserve your word and serve your word with all my heart. That's all I want to do. And the word he said to me, he kind of gave like an Enoch revelation. He's like, all right, you don't have to be here anymore. If that's what your desire is, you don't have to be here anymore. And we actually read this in the story this text is based off of, based off of from the apocryphal Acts of John. So if you could find the story that this text, um, you know, that reflects, that reflects this text, in the apocryphal Acts of John, you can see this more clearly. It's really amazing. So, here we are, a mention of the firstborn church, um, which is the order of Enoch, etc., right? As mentioned in Hebrews 12, 23. So, this order of Enoch text, you know, order of the ancients, order of Enoch text that we found is absolutely valid. And that's a whole nother teaching in itself. So, really amazing. I pray people can receive what I'm trying to say here. Uh, really amazing. I'll put this stuff in the description box below. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Chapter 3 of the Book of Jasher This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by C.J. Plogue. Chapter 3 And Enoch lived sixty-five years, and he begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after having begat Methuselah, and he served the Lord and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord, in knowledge and in understanding, and he wisely retired from the sons of men, 
and secreted himself away from them for many days. And it was at the expiration of many years whilst he was serving the Lord and praying before him in his house that an angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Rise, and go forth from thy house, and from the place where thou dost hide thyself, and appear to the sons of men, in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which they should go, and the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of God. And Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord, and went forth from his house, from his place, and from the chamber in which he was concealed. And he went to the sons of men, and taught them the ways of the Lord, and at that time assembled the sons of men, and acquainted them with the instruction of the Lord. And he ordered it to be proclaimed in all places where the sons of men dwelt, saying, Where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to the word of the Lord. And they came and bowed to him, and they heard his word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear his wisdom. And all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom. And they bowed down to him, and they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all one hundred and thirty kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom, knowledge, and the ways of the Lord, and he made peace amongst them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men two hundred and forty-three years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Methuselah, Elisha, and Elimelech, three sons, and their sisters were Malka and Nama, and Methuselah lived eighty-seven years, and he begat Lamech. And it was in the fifty-sixth year of the life of Lamech when Adam died. Nine hundred and thirty years old was he at his death, and his two sons, with Enoch and Methuselah his son, buried him with great pomp, as at the burial of kings in the cave which God had told him. And in that place all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. It has therefore become a custom among the sons of men to this day. And Adam died because he ate of the tree of knowledge, he and his children after him, as the Lord God had spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the two hundred and forty-third year of the reign of Enoch in that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men, and to secrete himself as at first, in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secrete himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God, and the day on which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the ways of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord he told them. And he did in this manner for many years, and he afterward concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven, and after that once in a month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him, and desired again to see the face of Enoch, and to hear his word. But they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might be punished and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble the sons of men, and to come to Enoch, thinking that they might all speak to him at the time when he should come forth amongst them. And they did so. And the day came when Enoch went forth, and they all assembled and came to him. And Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge. And they bowed down before him, and they said, May the king live! May the king live! And in some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called unto Enoch from heaven, and wished to bring him up to heaven, to make him reign there over the sons of God, as he had reigned over the sons of men upon the earth. When at that time Enoch heard this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth, and taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions. And he said to them, 
I have been required to ascend into heaven, I therefore do not know the day of my going. And now therefore I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and will give you instruction before I leave you, how to act upon the earth whereby you may live. And he did so. And he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them instruction, and he reproved them. And he placed before them statutes and judgments to do upon earth. And he made peace amongst them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time teaching them all these things. And at that time the sons of men were with Enoch, and Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descending from heaven, and the horse paced in the air. And they told Enoch what they had seen, and Enoch said to them, On my account does this horse descend upon earth. The time is come when I must go from you, and I shall no more be seeing you. And the horse descended at that time, and stood before Enoch, and all the sons of men that were with Enoch saw him. And Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delighteth to know the ways of the Lord his God? Let him come this day to Enoch before he is taken from us. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day, and all the kings of the earth with their princes and counsellors remained with him that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instruction. And he bade them serve the Lord and walk in his ways all the days of their lives, and he continued to make peace amongst them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon the horse, and he went forth, and all the sons of men went after him, about eight hundred thousand men, and they went with him one day's journey. And the second day he said to them, Return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. And some of them went from him, and those that remained went with him six days' journey. And Enoch said to them every day, Return to your tents, lest you may die. But they were not willing to return, and they went with him. And on the sixth day some of the men remained and clung to him. And they said to him, We will go with thee to the place where thou goest. As the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. And they urged so much to go with him that he ceased speaking to them, and they went after him and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused a census to be taken, in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind, with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he ascended into heaven. And all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through this snow, and see, perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead, and are now under these stones of snow. And they searched, but could not find him, for he had ascended into heaven. End of chapter 3